First up is Blue Beetle, and I will fully admit I went into this with pretty low of expectations. You know, I have not had the best of times at the last few DC films. They don't necessarily tonally jive with what I gravitate towards. I think The Flash was this sort of weird outlier in that it did have a lot of humor, but it also came with so much baggage and, you know, the knowledge that these last few films are part of an era that may or may not continue was its own whole thing. So went in with low expectations, was pleasantly surprised. Now, does that mean it's a great film? Uh, this is debatable, but compared to, I think, a lot of the more morose, dark, self-serious ones that we've seen of late, I really enjoyed this. It still suffers from a lot of the pitfalls that a lot of these origin superhero movies encounter, but I think what I liked about Blue Beetle the most, and I think, you know, they are aware that this is the actual superpower of the film, is that... Yes, it's about the person who becomes Blue Beetle, but this one really incorporates his family and the people in it react how, closer at least to, how I would imagine real human beings would react upon learning that, you know, a member of their family has basically become a symbiote with a, a scarab alien technology. This is not a spoiler if you're familiar with the origins of Blue Beetle, and if not, that is the general origin of Blue Beetle. So... Blue Beetle himself, Jaime Reyes, is played by Sholo Maridueña, and I'm so sorry that I probably butchered his name. I think he's fine in it. I have not seen his other work, but I, I know he comes from Cobra Kai. I think everyone surrounding him are who I enjoyed more, and I, I think that's actually very intentional on the filmmaker's parts. You know, it's nice, actually, to have a support system and other characters. It helps round out these sort of individual loners, you know. Yay, Bruce Wayne is Batman, etc., and, and, you know, lives alone in his tower, but he doesn't connect to as many people as opposed to this character who's from a loving family and a community of people. And yeah, I, I just really thought they did that part of it well, and I think they know it. The rest of the cast is rounded out by Adriana Barraza, Damian Alcazar, El Padilla Carrillo, Bruno Marquezine, Raul Max Torrijo, Belissa Escobedo, Harvey Guillen, George Lopez, and Susan Sarandon. And yes, I know one of those things is not like the others, and I sincerely apologize for my pronunciation you know it's I didn't take Spanish or any Spanish adjacent languages so sometimes I struggle with that but anyway uh, I am trying my best but Susan Sarandon our outlier plays the baddie I, I don't think that's a spoiler I think that's pretty much in the trailers you know and from the get-go it's pretty clear so I feel decent about talking about that much like most superhero films uh, you know it's, the conflict feels semi one-dimensional I think this one has an extra layer of it just because of her backstory and it's a female villain and all that stuff but like I said the root of this movie is the family unit and I, I also when I saw George Lopez come on screen I was like oh no he's just gonna like overpower this but he is a really nice comedic touch to it you know Harvey Guillen from what we do in the shadows I think is a really nice moments in it uh, the whole family just really gets an opportunity to shine and the movie my biggest thing about it is like it runs a little bit long it's two hours and seven minutes I think they could have trimmed a good 20 30 minutes out of it but I didn't want them to trim any of the stuff with the family I wanted them to trim some of the unnecessary you know fight sequences or some of the training montages of getting your powers and all that stuff like we've seen that stuff before and the Blue Beetles powers are certainly fascinating but they you know it's, it's almost nicer with them to just be able to be like yeah um this is what's going on just let's just accept it and move on but Again, one of the things I enjoy the most is that everyone in it sort of reacts in a more grounded way, at least, to how one thinks one would react if, you know, this person was to join your family. There's a lot of jokes in it. You know, like I said, I didn't actually take Spanish, but having grown up in California, there's little bits and pieces that you kind of pick up that may or may not be like more inappropriate that I think they managed to like slide in because it was in Spanish and I guess the censors didn't care as much about it or it's just acceptable in PG-13 but overall I actually had a much better time than I was expecting I laughed at plenty of the sequences the action is fine it feels a little Iron Man-y uh, I, I got kind of freaked out by the way the Blue Beetle talks because they make his face talk which you know Iron Man doesn't I don't know if that was necessary the CG is a little bit weak at points but if you were already potentially interested in this if you like this genre I think it's actually worth giving a chance to and the other thing is it's not as entrenched in the DC extended universe and so you don't have to have the knowledge of everything that's been going on with Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and all that stuff like I liked that it, it was a clean origin story you know for better or for worse it had humor it had heart it seemed like people actually cared about getting this movie done and having fun and you know of course the representation factor and I think that helped elevate it compared to some of the other entries into the DC universe or just comic book movies in general of late you know I have expressed this before but I'm I'm somebody who 
who's certainly suffering from the fatigue. So to see something that felt refreshing like this, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Sometimes it's fun to have just sort of a standalone E uh, film that doesn't need you to have 20 plus years of experience and, you know, homework involved. Like, yay. If it's done in a pleasant way, it can be a really enjoyable experience. So overall, you know, it does, it did have its flaws. I did wish it was shorter, but I'm going to give it a 3.7 out of 5. The other film I have this week is called The Monkey King, and it's an animated film out on Netflix. And oh, man, what a what a, a short film that I still also somehow managed wish was shorter. I, I was semi hopeful for this one, so I grew up loving The Monkey King, the story. I do not even remotely pretend to actually know what the accurate story was or to have retained any of it, but I had this series of books that, you know, each one was sort of a chapter of the tale of the journey to the West. This version of it is the story of The Monkey King's, like, origin before he gets involved in the journey to the West, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about at all, The Monkey King is one of the most famous figures in Chinese mythology. He is a monkey with powers and you know he gets tangled up with buddha sometimes and the bodhisattva guan ying and all these things and he's a troublemaker and all this stuff so it's a character that like especially i think as a kid i gravitated towards he goes on this very famous adventure in order to bring back the buddha scriptures and anyway so it, you know it's it's a pretty well-known story it has been adapted so many times you know um in fact if you want a good adaptation or part of the story or you know characters involving it i recommend american born chinese but this is the sort of prequel to his most famous work and it's actually directed by Anthony Stacci who I am a pretty decent fan of he was a director on Box Trolls which I thought was a really creative film out of Leica also I liked that it had an Asian voice cast you have Jimmy O. Yang as the Monkey King also they never call him Sin Wukong which is weird but I don't know you have Bo and Yang as the Dragon King you have Jolie Huang Rappaport as Girl Lin you've got Joe Koi as Benbo and Ron Yuan as Babo and basically what I figured out part way very early on in the movie is that the best western analogy I could think of I was like oh they are basically ripping off Disney's Hercules that's what it felt like and that's not to say that there aren't actual parallels between you know Hercules the the uh, Greek mythological figure and like the monkey king in terms of oh there's you know there's feats to be done and there are gods involved and all this stuff but the structure of this these animated films felt a little too close for comfort for me and you know again maybe some of it's just like well the mythology source material that's just how it rolls you have Hoon Lee as the Jade Emperor Stephanie Su has a bit part in it Andrew Peng you know it's got a pretty decent voice cast but I just felt like the comedy in it, and it is a barrage of attempted comedy, does not have room to breathe. I think that's one of the things that works really well about a film like Hercules is that they let jokes land and they don't, you know, hit you over the head with the next one immediately. The pacing of this is really the thing that I struggled with. And I, like I said, it's an hour and a half, if that. And so the fact that I'm feeling that way about it is a little disconcerting. You know, I think the action is colorful I guess is the nicest thing I'll say about it there are also oh this is not too much of a there there it's more of a warning it, there are a lot of musical numbers in it I feel like this movie didn't know exactly what it wanted to be so it just threw everything at the wall like a monkey throws things um and and not enough it stuck but there were moments I was like oh this could be funny also just again to my analogy um Benbo and Babo are like pain and panic. You know, the Dragon King also rules over the underworld. Like it's all, there are so many parallels, but like Benbo and Babo are not characters that are known. So they created them for this and then turned them into the pain and panic of. So it just, it didn't feel original. It didn't feel like it had a perspective. Yes, I know I am nowhere near an expert on Chinese mythology, but it didn't even feel like they incorporated some of the more classic other stories around it. You know, there are a few that I was like, oh, okay, I know the, uh, this about the Dragon King or I know like this about this character, but you know, it, it didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel entertaining. The animation style was, uh, it felt kind of phoned in. There is actually, there are a few cool sequences that they like sort of break with the the style of and do some interesting things with. I was like, oh, I would have much rather seen that than this sort of plug and play CG that we get a lot with films that don't necessarily have like the world's biggest budget and are maybe using an existing pipeline. And I know it's super hard to make a film. I don't want to knock it in that sense, but it felt like it maybe had potential, but didn't want to meditate enough on it and just sort of got rushed out. I will say, if you have kids, I think this might be a fine one to just sort of turn on in the background. It's not going to be their favorite movie. You're not going to necessarily want to like scratch your eyeballs out though after having watched it. Like there's nothing that they're going to come away from it, you know, driving you bonkers with like let it go or something, you know. So it'll it'll pass maybe an hour and a half for them. But for me as a childless adult, but who is a fan of The Monkey King, I'm going to give it a 2.6 out of 5. And again, I'm probably being a little bit generous. 